Hi, I'm Pam Fox at pamfox.org. Welcome everybody to my kitchen. Tonight I'm going to be cooking dinner from Dr. Michael Greger's How Not to, How Not to Die Cookbook. I apologize that everything is backwards. Everything is backwards because um, I have a Samsung and it will not let me flip that over. So on YouTube it will, on Facebook Live it won't. So I apologize, but this is the Dr. Michael Greger How Not to Die Cookbook. And tonight I'm going to be making spinach and mushroom black bean burritos. So I'm really excited about this because Mexican is one of my favorite foods. Um, so for this recipe we begin by um, getting some red onion and garlic uh, cooking in the frying pan. A lot of times when recipes call for red onion I just leave it out, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in this one because it's cooked and I'm okay with that. So I'm just going to chop this up finely. I apologize that you guys can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just chopping a red onion. This is a beautiful red onion. I noticed that um, in this cookbook, that's about the only onion that he uses in his recipes. And I found out why it's because um, Dr. Michael Greger is really into the science. And according to some studies he's read, red onions are the healthiest onions. So that's why he uses them so much in his recipes as opposed to other onions. Not that other onions are bad for you. He just goes by the, you know, the good, better, best um, philosophy. So. If a red onion is better than a yellow onion in terms of your health and immunity and all of that, then go for the red onion if you can. I have yet to learn how to chop an onion. <laughs> I kind of do it weird, so I'm glad you're not seeing me do it. But um, I went on YouTube and watched how to chop an onion, and there's a really kind of cool hack on how to do it. And, I just, I watched it once and then I've forgotten since how to do it, so. So that calls for a half a cup of onion and that's, that's about half a cup. And it calls for um, two cloves of garlic, mint, so as I was saying, Mexican food is, has always been one of my favorites. I think a lot of people feel that way. You can just do a lot of things with Mexican food. It's kind of, you know, you use a lot of the ingredients over and over, but I like to do taco salad a lot. That's really easy. Um, I like to do nachos, burritos, tacos. I'm just mincing up two cloves of garlic. Um, I've already made the salsa that this recipe calls for a salsa to go with the burritos. And the recipe is very similar to just the salsa that I usually make, like a pico de gallo. I'll show it to you. It's just um, tomatoes and peppers and cilantro and lime. I didn't put raw onions in that one because I don't like raw onions. Usually I don't. Now if I were to make that and let it marinate for a day, I'd be okay with the raw onions. Don't know why. Okay, so I've got those cooking. Um, up next is we're going to get these beans going. It just says to put them in a bowl and mash them. These are black beans. This is my Pampered Chef can opener. <laughs> It's kind of a funny thing. It sits like on top like that and it takes the whole lid off. It doesn't just take like the inner part of the lid off, it takes the whole top off. And I got this years ago when I first moved into this house. Some friends of mine at church threw a pampered chef party for me. It was a surprise party. And I didn't know it until I got there, but and then my friends bought me, you know, a bunch of really cool pampered chef stuff. And I still use all of it to this day. I think I broke one of the pots. I had one of those. Ooh, hi. <laughs> I, I broke one of those um, stone. I don't know, like a terracotta pot. Okay, so I'm just. Um, I just 
rinse these black beans and I'm going to put them in this bowl and it just says to mash them with a fork or a potato masher. And I'm just sauteing these onions and garlic in, um, in water because I usually don't cook with oil. So I'm going to put a little bit more water in there. I'm just going to mash up these beans. I don't know, I think this would be easier in a food processor, but. <laughs> and then up next, we're going to add uh, the mushrooms and the spinach. <clears throat> so this is just making kind of a filling for the burritos. And it's basically beans, spinach, onions, garlic, and mushrooms. I think that's it. And then this salsa. So I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to mash these, but that looks like they're about kind of half mashed. I don't know. I've never made this recipe before, so I'm just going to set that to the side. Turn that up a little bit. Okay, so um, this calls for four cups of baby spinach. And nice because you know like this ready bought bag of baby spinach is five ounces and it's it makes about four four cups of spinach so that's perfect um, and then the mushrooms it calls for two cups of chopped mushrooms so I'm hoping that this will be about two cups chopped mushrooms mushrooms. I don't know about you guys, but any recipe that I'm trying that has mushrooms in it, I get excited because I love all kinds of mushrooms. I know they're not everybody's thing, but for people who are eating plant-based, um, they're great because um, they're kind of, they can be used kind of as a meat substitute. So instead of maybe ground beef that you would put in you know, a burrito, you use mushrooms. In fact, oh, one of my favorite, my absolute favorite um, Mexican dishes is um, mushroom tacos. And you cook, you chop up the mushrooms just like you would be making and fry them up. And that's your, like your taco meat filling. And you put on there, you know, taco seasonings just like you would put in taco meat. And um, just frying up all that water. And then you put that on a, um, a corn tortilla with some guacamole, and that's it. It's the most simple thing. That's one of my absolute favorite meals. It's really good. I love mushrooms. I love avocado. I love guacamole. So it's really good. I'm just kind of... I should have done this in advance. I'm just kind of roughly chopping these. Almost done. Woo! Overboard. <laughs> so I'm having a really awesome day today. I have the house all to myself. I've been really, really lazy. I've been relaxing, doing some reading, watching YouTube, <laughs> going on Facebook. <laughs> but Dwayne's in Portland today, getting stuff for the new shop, so... I opted to stay home and get caught up on some stuff. Uh, let's see, Lo. So it says to add the spinach until it's wilted, so we can put that in. Oh wow! Get to wilting. No room for my mushrooms. Um. So yeah, I've just been having a really nice, relaxing day. I'm finding more and more that I just, I really love to cook. I really, really enjoy cooking and I want to spend more time doing it. Um, I used to hate to cook. In fact, I used to always say, I hate to cook and I'm a terrible cook. And I was, you could ask my kids. You know, I just made, I made a lot of tacos and lasagna and 
what else? We just kind of had five or six things that we kind of rotated through our favorites, which is, that's what most people do. That's still what I do. Um, but, you know, like, I, could, I would make one bad meal, and none of us really liked it, and I would just decide, oh, I hate to cook, and I'm a terrible cook just because I would make one bad meal. You know, when you have kids, they're kind of finicky sometimes. Although my daughter was never that finicky, but my son was kind of finicky, so. Boy, that really wilted down. Look at that, four cups of spinach. It's almost completely. Wow. Okay, so that left me lots of room for these mushrooms. I'm just gonna dump those. So that looks like about two cups. It looks good to me right into the pan. And then it just says, um, okay, so we add in the beans. Let's not forget about that. So you just cook this until it's kind of heated through. really good. And then it also calls for a tablespoon of nutritional yeast. Remember that's our cheese. And it also calls for, um, well it calls for hot sauce, which I'm, which I'm not going to put in any hot sauce because I don't like it spicy. But it calls for a teaspoon of this um, Unami blend, which is a recipe in um, the cookbook. And it's basically got onion powder and garlic powder and parsley. And it's got a bunch of stuff in it. Celery seed. It's kind of like an all-spice for, I don't know. There's a lot of recipes in this cookbook that call for this particular seasoning. And it's just something you can make yourself and have on hand for these recipes. So I went ahead and made it since I'm going to be cooking a lot of these, trying a lot of these recipes. So this looks and smells really, really good. It's just about ready. So I'm going to heat up this pan over here because we're going to make burritos and I'm going to heat the burritos. Um, I'm going to heat the burritos in the tortilla in that pan. Oh buddy. I'm here all alone, <laughs> all alone cooking dinner. Well, for those of you that catch this on the replay, hi, thanks for watching. I hope you'll try this recipe. I think it's going to be epic. Really good. Okay, that looks done. I'm just going to turn it down. And this calls, this recipe calls for whole grain tortillas. I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to buying healthy tortillas, I have not found one yet that is actually healthy and that I like. I'm gonna try these tonight. Um, they're actually gluten-free tortillas made by Sonoma. And the ingredients don't look too bad. The ingredients don't look too bad, but I just need to make them myself, I guess. So what you do is you just, I'm heating this up over here. This is a nonstick pan, so we can just put it right in to heat. Turn this off. So in goes the burrito filling. And this looks like it's going to make, well, not a lot, maybe, I don't know, maybe four burritos, which would be good for my husband and I. We could both eat two of these easily. So, okay, I'm going to roll this up and then I'm going to fry it. I'm glad you can't see me rolling this because I am terrible. I'm going to put a little bit more in there. Do you guys ever go, like, to a burrito bar? Um, what's that place called? Well, there's Beach Burrito in um, Astoria, but it's the one near my parents' place where they make burritos. Can't think of it. Anyway, I'm always so impressed <laughs> with how they roll these without spilling. See? Yeah, mine's spilling, so I'm just going to stick that in there and let it start to heat through. I'm going to make one more. 
We'll get two of them going. It's one of the um, great benefits of being on a plant-based diet is just eating as much as you care for. Never calorie restricting or portion controlling or counting calories. Just eat as much as you want. At least that's what I've done and I've just continued to lose weight. Very freeing way to eat. Okay, so uh, mushroom in my cookbook. Alright, so Okay, so while those are cooking, let's read a little bit. So last time we were talking about brain disease and today, so again, in, in his book, How Not to Die, he talks about our country's top killers. So we've gone over the number one killer, coronary artery disease, number two killer, lung disease, number three killer, brain disease, and the number four killer is digestive cancers. Every year, 106,000 Americans die from cancers that might well have been prevented. While some cancers have a significant genetic component, common digestive cancers are more likely the result of poor dietary choices. If you were to flatten out your intestines, they could cover thousands of square feet. This means an extraordinary amount of surface area interacts with your food as it travels through your digestive tract. Food is our single greatest exposure to the outside environment. Colorectal, colon and rectal cancer is one of the most commonly diagnosed cancers in the United States, but it's relatively rare in India. Comparatively, American men have 11 times more colorectal cancer and women have 10 times more than those living in India. Uh, one possible reason, spices. Spices such as turmeric, a staple of Indian cuisine, including curry powder, curry powder appear to have a variety of anti-cancer properties. Another possibility is the food in which the turmeric laden curry powder is used. India is one of the world's largest producers of fruits and vegetables and only about 7% of the adult population eats meat on a daily basis. Woo, perfect. It's kind of browning these. What most of this population does eat daily are legumes, beans, split peas, chickpeas and lentils, and dark green leafy vegetables, which are packed with another class of cancer-fighting compounds called phytates. Pancreatic cancer is among the most lethal cancers with only 6% of its patients surviving five years after diagnosis. This is why prevention is paramount. The National Institutes of Health AARP study, which followed 525,000 people aged 50 to 71 for years beginning in 1995 found the consumption of fat from animal sources was significantly associated with pancreatic cancer risk. No such correlation was found with consuming plant fats. Likewise, the European Prospective Investigation into Cancer Nutrition, otherwise known as the EPIC study, which followed 477,000 people for a decade beginning in 1992, found a 72% increased risk of pan pancreatic cancer for every 50 grams of poultry, about a quarter of a chicken breast, consumed daily. How are we doing over here? Oh, these are going to be good. So, um... So yeah, what was I going to say? Um, I guess I forgot what I was going to say. Let's eat. <laughs> All right, these are done. Does that look good? Looks pretty good. So, you know, in the old days, of course, um, my favorite part about Mexican food was the cheese and the sour cream. <laughs> it's going to be too hot for me to eat right now. Ah. But I, you know, you just kind of get over that as time goes by. You just kind of get over the, I, you know, 
there are cheese replacements on a plant-based diet. That, um, some of them I really like, some of them I don't. You can make homemade sour cream um, that's pretty good. And, it, and the, the further you get away from having had sour cream, the more you forget what it tastes like. So then the new sour cream becomes pretty, you know, pretty good. So these are gluten-free. Mmm, we're good. All right, so I'm just going to have a bite of this. I'll probably burn my tongue. And then I'm going to try it with the salsa. Mmm. Mmm, that's really good. Really, really good. So, another thing I like to do is make guacamole and put that on here too. And then you, it just can't be beat. <laughs> I think anything with guacamole on it can't be beat. Mmm. Hot. Just put a little bit of that on there. Show you guys the filling. It's hot. It's really good though. Really, really good. Um, it's too hot to eat right now though. It's too bad there's nobody on here. I could talk to somebody. Not a single person joined me tonight. I guess it is Saturday night. Mm. <laughs> One of the nice things too about eating on a plant-based diet is the food just, it tastes and feels so nourishing. You know, like my old way of eating, you know, kind of the standard American diet, the food tasted delicious and amazing, but it never felt like it was... I don't know, it's hard to explain. It never felt like it was nourishing me or when I was done eating. Like a lot of times when I finish eating a plant-based meal, especially potatoes, they really do it for me for some reason. Like I get a sense of, um, I don't know, it's hard to describe, just a, like almost like I'm high on drugs or something, just a euphoria, just a really good, my stomach just feels amazing and I just feel really good and relaxed. There's just something about, because the plants are very nourishing. They have you know, phytochemicals, uh, phytonutrients, and a lot of vitamins, and of course the fiber, a lot of water in the plants, so they're just very nourishing. They just are. And you begin to sense that more and more and be more aware of it, I guess is what I'm trying to say, uh, the longer you're on a plant-based diet and, you know, the further you get from eating the animal foods or any of the foods that were making you sick, processed, you know, highly processed foods. And it also, it's also an incredible feeling too, just to be able to eat, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how many of you have ever just like, mmm, it's a good one. How many of you have ever just like, I don't know, you just develop this relationship with food when you're always telling yourself you can't have this or you can't have that. You just develop this bad relationship with food. And so it's just nice to, I don't even think about that stuff anymore. I just really look forward to every meal. I really enjoy the food. I'm just going to smash up this avocado and make a quick guacamole. Really nice avocado. So for me, my perfect guacamole has um, a little bit of lemon. A little bit of garlic salt and a little bit of red wine vinegar and that's it very simple and I just think I mean I'll eat that as a meal sometimes I'll just like mash up a couple of avocados I don't do that a lot because that is a lot of fat but uh, I'll mash up a whole avocado and put in some corns corn and beans tomatoes and cilantro and eat that as a meal Red wine vinegar, just a splash. Dwayne says I use too much vinegar in everything I make. <laughs> I do love vinegar. 
So this is going to take this burrito to the next level. Who's here? Somebody's here. Say hi to me. One person is here with me. <laughs> I don't know who, though. Okay, that is this quick and simple, delicious guacamole. So I'm going to put a slather of that on there and a slather of this on there and take it to the next level. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything's better with guacamole. You guys ever heard of mukbangs? You guys. Oh, there's two people here. Mm. <laughs> hey, Araminta. I've been in here cooking in the kitchen all by myself until you came along. <laughs> you guys ever heard of mukbangs? I do them sometimes on my YouTube channel. It's where you cook food and then you just you just eat it. <laughs> There's a lot of people out there that really like watching mukbangs. Mm. I don't mind it, but my husband thinks it's kind of creepy, so. <laughs> so I'm doing um, <laughs> mushroom and spinach burrito with a homemade pica de gallo. And I just whipped together a little bit of guacamole. And it's still hot, so ah, it's kind of falling apart on the bottom there. From the Dr. Michael Greger cookbook. So you guys ever want to watch any of my mukbangs, you can go to my YouTube channel. It's called Wonder Vegan. I've been doing that for a couple years now. And I really enjoy it. And I enjoy this too. Which is really funny because I've always been one of those people that's got huge stage fright it's like really really afraid to, go, to speak in public and so if you go back and watch my older videos you'll see that i am so much more comfortable now than i used to be oh my gosh but um but i've got a really important message to share and i really wanted to get it out to anybody that was willing to listen which is to try the plants give the plants a chance <laughs> No, I'm thirsty. Mm. Oh, Div. So Div, I, I know you're not here, but you almost always watch on the replay. He was giving me a hard time because I was recommending this product, but you can't even see what it is because the label came off. Um, so this is actually called Juice, and it's spelled J-U-C-E. And I got it at Costco, and it's about $18. But I drink a glass of this every day, sometimes twice a day, and it's still, you just use one little scoop. One little scoop like that, and I still have about a quarter of a container left. But it's just got like it's just, it's just all these fruits and vegetables, lots of them. It's really delicious. Um, so anyway, Div, that's what that is. J U C E, and it's at Costco, but it's not at your Costco. Div lives in um, Colorado. <laughs> it's only in the north. It's only in the north coast or the northwest. It's a uh, northwest company. I think they're out of Seattle. I'm really surprised this recipe didn't call for like any cumin or chili spices. If I make it again, I would definitely add those in. Just to make it more reminiscent of <laughs> the way I'm used to cooking Mexican food. You know? Alright. I'm going to finish this burrito and then I'm going to go. So that's what this is, this is a juice. I have a little bit of crystallized ginger in the bottom, which you can get. I buy it at Fred Meyer in the bulk section. 
Let me see these little guys. I put them in my kombucha when I make kombucha. It gives it a gingery kind of ginger ale flavor. Mm. These tortillas are actually really good. Gluten free tortillas. All right, this is last bite of burrito number one. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Happy tummy, happy tummy. All right, that's it for spinach and mushroom black bean burritos. Thank you for watching.